Hey everyone, it's Lauren Alvin with Add a Pup Dog and Puppy Training. I'm back from Italy, but I'm still playing catch up with my life, which is my my hair is wet, and this training tip is coming out 1.30 on a Tuesday. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, this one is about potty training troubleshooting. Um, I get a lot of the same questions from puppy owners or, you know, newly adopted dogs or older dogs um, who are having trouble with house training or house breaking. I don't really like potty training. Um, so the goal in potty training is to get your dog to poop and pee outside. <laughs> but your goal in teaching them how to be potty trained is for them to have every possible opportunity to poop and pee outside and ideally zero opportunity to poop or pee inside. So that means they get dozens of opportunities to poop and pee outside throughout the day. They're going out, if they're eight weeks old, they're going out like every 10 or 15 minutes for the first day or so. So you figure out their schedule and that you are catching. Every time there's this much wee in that bladder, they have an opportunity to go get rid of it outside. Their opportunities to do it inside in a perfect world would be zero. So they would be constantly supervised, active supervision, not just being in the same room with them, eyeballs on the dog, observing their behavior and thinking about if it might be a sign that they have to go potty. Um, or they're in a puppy-proof area, so a crate or, you know, wherever their spot is. That's the goal. If it's not catching on, <laughs> then here's my advice. Rule number one, call your vet. They could be dealing with a UTI. They could be dealing with worms. They could be dealing with a congenital deformity. They could be dealing with kidney disease or diabetes or all sorts of other things that are problems <laughs> that training is not going to touch. And if they feel icky or maybe their joints hurt and they don't want to go down the stairs to go into the yard anymore so they're peeing in the house, something like that. Potty training isn't going to touch that. So call your vet. Call them and tell them what's going on. A phone call is free. <laughs> call them and tell them what's going on and ask them what, what you should do. Um, having been in the vet a couple weeks ago for shots is not the same as bringing up, my dog is pooing and peeping, peeping, peeing in the house more than I think it should. Potty training isn't sticking. It's been a couple weeks. A vet's not going to know if something's wrong necessarily by just looking at the dog for regular exams. So you have to bring up specific issues to your vet that you're concerned about. They're not psychics. So number one, call your vet. Number two, we'll go back to the formula. Every opportunity outside and zero opportunities inside. So take them out more frequently. Give them every possible opportunity to go outside. If your puppy is having accidents, if you're taking them out every hour and they're having accidents, then you need to take them out every 45 minutes. If they're having accidents every 40, when they're going out every 45 minutes, you need to take them out every 30 minutes. If they're having accidents then, you really need to call your vet because that's not very normal. But that's the idea. If they're at a certain schedule and it's not working, shrink it. They need more opportunities to go out. Flip side, if they're on a certain schedule and it's not working, then you need to supervise them more. So puppies need to go as soon as they wake up. Adults need to go as soon as they wake up. Uh, when they're done playing, after they've eaten, after they drink, um, in the middle of play sometimes, that kind of works things out. Um, you need to let them out more frequently and you need to be able to predict when it might happen and get them out before it does. Um, also, if you've got a little bitty puppy who, you know, you're working in one room or doing something and then they sneak off and pee in the living room, you're giving them access to that. <laughs> so, one, you're not supervising them because your eyeballs aren't on them. Two, if they always pee in one room, gate it off. You've shut the bathroom. <laughs> it's closed down for service, so they can't go in there. Um, prevent their access to places where they're going to pee and minimize the opportunities to be unsupervised maximize the opportunities to go outside. You could crate or tether them if puppy potty training is going really rough. Some people do this with new puppies and newly adopted dogs. They have the leash on the dog and it's attached to them. Like they carabiner it to their pants loop or something like that. So the dog is attached to them and there's no possible way for the dog to just sneak off for 10 seconds and pee in the other room because you know where they are. Um, you're actively supervising them inside, eyeballs on the dog. If that's not cutting it, go back to your vet. But here's the other thing. Often, I hear, usually puppies, but sometimes older dogs, they go outside, you know, I took them out, I'm taking them out every 45 minutes, and they're walking around the entire property, and they're not doing anything. And then as soon as they come back in, they pee on the rug. 
So here's what you got to do. My computer fell asleep. <laughs> here's what you got to do. It's a business trip. You're going to take him out on leash to a boring designated potty spot. And you're going to say, go potty or do it or whatever you have to do. And then you're going to be boring. You're not going to play with them or engage them. You can say, go ahead, go snap. That's fine. But other than that, you're just a post. They are at the potty spot. It's a business trip. Business first and pleasure second. So I usually give them, you know, okay, we'll time three minutes. We're out here at the potty spot. We've got three minutes to go. If you go in those three minutes, make a huge stinking deal out of it. You're such a brilliant puppy. I don't need that. He's so good. Do that as soon as they pop up from the squat. Not as soon as they go down. As soon as they're done. And not when they come in on the porch. As soon as they're done. Um, make a big deal out of it if they do it in those three minutes. If you're out there for three minutes and they don't do anything, go back in and leave their leash on. Keep your eyeballs on them. Set a timer to take them back out in a couple minutes. So you're giving them every opportunity to go outside and no opportunities to go inside. If they do go potty outside, that's when walking around the property and sniffing and running and chewing on sticks and chasing butterflies happens. Business first, pleasure second. Also, if you got a little puppy and you're outside for a long time, you know, if they do their potty to begin with and then you go running around and have a lot of fun, give them another potty break at the end because sometimes they work it down. And if it's been a while, then, you know, they're, oh, we're having so much fun. And then they go in and they're like, oh, oops, I forgot. I have to go again. So give them another opportunity to do that. Keep them on leash when they're inside, especially when they first come back in. But if that's still not working too well, Keep them on leash inside. Either they're dragging it and you know where they are because you can hear the leash, or they're attached to you or, you know, an eye hook in the baseboard or something like that. You need to know where the dog is at all times. That means they're on your mind, you're taking them out real frequently, and they're not going to sneak off and do it anywhere else. If you catch your dog in the act, if they start going into the, the squat and a couple of little drops come out, cheerfully, you're not going, ah, or no, or anything like that. Cheerfully, in moderate tone, moderate volume, without scaring them, usher them outside. So if a puppy starts to circle and maybe, you know, starts to go like that, I'll go, oh, outside, outside, let's go outside, here we go, at that volume. I'm not, I'm not trying to make them go, let's get back up. I'm just going, oh, we're going outside, we're going to the, yeah, we get them outside as fast as we can. And then I make a mental note. I should have been watching the puppy. He needs to go out a minute before, you know, when I first started thinking out of it, I should have got up and taken him out. He needed to go a minute before he started doing that. If you find a accident, if you find a mistake, clean it up. Enzymatic cleaner. Our idea of clean is very different than dog's ideas of clean. So um, things like Nature's Miracle or Scout's Honor or um, I've got this other one. I don't remember the name. I found out on Amazon. An enzymatic cleaner. Um, scrubbing bubbles ain't gonna cut it. It smells clean to us, but it's not getting the stuff. So enzymatic cleaner is what you want. Um, and that's it. You don't rub their nose in it. You don't scold them. You don't show it to them. You don't do anything like that. Um, because it's not going to teach them what to do next time. And you can create more problems, which I'll explain in a second. So again, make a mental note. The dog needed to go out sooner or the dog needs to have access closed off to this area where they really like to poop. Are some dogs harder or impossible to train? Well, potty train. Um, no dogs are impossible to train. They have a brain stem, even if they don't, because you can train cockroaches, um, and they have several brains throughout the body segments. Um, so no, nothing's impossible to train. Some dogs can have a harder time. Some dogs, if a dog is incontinent, like if they've been paralyzed from you know the hips down, you're not going to house train them. If they have a UTI or a medical issue or kidney disease, you're not going to be able to potty train them until that is addressed. Um, so there's that. Talk to your vet. Some dogs have more difficulty with potty training. Dogs who come from a puppy mill or were, you know, stuck in a crate for 12 hours a day, either in the current home or a previous home, they come from a nice Pennsylvania farm, puppy mill, um, they learn that they just have to soil themselves. You either hold it in and hurt yourself or you let it go and there's nowhere else to let it go but where you are so they don't really understand the concept of being clean or that you do this stuff elsewhere from where you usually are um, so those dogs have a hard time definitely potty training it's possible um, and some of those dogs might need to have a potty pad or something 
um, for the rest of their lives because they just don't have that concept. Puppies who are potty trained to begin with with potty pads are going to have a harder time because they don't understand. I have a video on this, but they don't understand that poop and pee goes outside and you don't do that inside. They learn that poop and pee goes outside but also inside sometimes on rectangles on the floor that are soft, like your bathroom rug. So the it's not a dichotomy. It's kind of mushied up there for them. So they might always have that, oh, I have to pee, but it's raining, so I'll just go do it on the rug. Because <laughs> I can do that, because that's what I learned. So it's a little harder with that. Um, dogs who have been scolded or scared or had their noses rubbed in it or anything like that for accidents, it's going to be hard to potty train them because they're terrified <laughs> or stressed out about it, not necessarily terrified. Um, so you don't have to beat your dog up to scare them over this, just ah oh, or no or something like that could really scare them. What they might learn, what they learn if you go and rub their nose in it, is that human plus mess equals wrath. And that doesn't mean, that doesn't necessarily correlate to human doesn't want me to do this in the house. What they learn is human sees it and then bad things happen to me. So those are dogs who go and sneak off in another room, or they do it in the closet, or they do it behind the bed, or they eat it because they have to destroy the evidence because they're so afraid of what might happen if a human sees it. So scolding or scaring your dog over it isn't going to teach them what you want them to learn. It's only going to teach them that sometimes you're very scary and they don't really understand why. And that's not a good relationship to have with your dog because they love you. I'll get into more involved. I have some very... Some very cute, wiggly, small training tip ideas scheduled, um, hopefully, for next week. Um, but this is a pretty important one. I get this question a lot. We've got tricks class coming up in October. We've got tricks one. Um, that's open to all graduates to beginner good manners or an equivalent if you contact me beforehand. Um, and tricks two. And that is for graduates of tricks. So all the fancy dogs who've already got the regular tricks, we're going to do some really involved cool stuff in tricks two. Um, Games night is the 26th, October 26th. Um, yeah, that's about it. Let me know if you have any questions or requests. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.